councillors, welcome to our extraordinary meeting of council to debate the council views on Greenbelt policy. I extend a warm welcome to those members of the public who are in attendance both in the gallery and watching via the video link in committee room one and elsewhere on the webcast. Please remain standing while I invite my chaplain, Reverend David Chester, to lead us in prayer. Lord, we ask your guidance this evening, being mindful of the important matters that are to be discussed. We also pray for those in need, those who care for them, the refugees, and those without shelter or work, for the sick, the lonely and the despairing, the aged and the distressed. All who suffer through violence, were warfare, crime, exploitation, or neglect. Heavenly Father, your blessed Son Jesus Christ has shown us that the secret of happiness is a heart set free from selfish desires. Help us to look not only to our own care, but also the needs of others, and inspire us to indulge in fair dealing and fellow feeling, as may show our common citizenship in you. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, David. Please be seated. <coughs> Before we commence this evening's business, I'd also like to welcome our new member of the council, Councillor Joe Bird. I'm sure all the councillors will wish to join in congratulating him. <laughs> Item one is declarations of interest. Members are asked to consider whether you have any disclosable, pecuniary and or any other relevant interest in connection with any matters to be determined at this meeting, and if so, to declare it and state the nature of such interest. Councillor Fax. Mr Mayor, I've been informed by the uh, legal advisor um, that as a director at the Gentle Living, I will have to declare the prejudicial interest and leave the meeting and take no part. I will be available if there are any other votes or any other business available. Councillor Peter Leach. Yes, I've also been given the same advice as a director of the Green Group. Thank you. Any other declarations? <coughs> Councillor Green. Mr Mayor, I, we haven't really had a chance to have a conversation, but I was told there was an email coming around which I don't seem to have received. I, I would dearly like to take part in this Debate and to make my views clear. I wonder if the borough solicitor could explain why it is that uh, we are being asked to leave the meeting. Of course, man. Uh, I have been able to speak to as many members in this position as possible. Uh, clearly, members in their interests declare their management or financial interest in companies and organisations, including developers. Uh, those developers, uh, which includes those organisations already mentioned, uh, have a financial interest in the outcome of the local plan process, of which this is a part. And on that basis, we've advised those members in those positions of management or having a financial interest in a development company or organisation uh, have a prejudicial interest and should not take part in this debate. In that case, as I'm in the same position as Councillor Fax, I, as a director of Magenta, I will declare that, uh, declare that interest and leave the meeting if that's the case. Thank you, Councillor Green. Mr. Mayor, can I ask a question of the Head of Law? Given that people have a prejudicial interest in the directors of a developer, what is the position regarding the Will Growth Company? Does anybody, any members of this council, have any parts of the Willow Road Company? And if so, should they be closed? Firstly, Mayor, that would have been the case uh, had Will Growth Company uh, been up and running. However, the partnership agreement hasn't been signed and it's not yet an incorporated body. Uh, when it is an incorporated body, those members who become directors of that organisation would share the same interest uh, as other members in the chamber but at the moment uh, that's not the case because the, uh, the growth company partnership uh, does not as yet formally exist. Uh, however not being able to take part in this debate as a formal item of business 
does not stop those members from submitting their own views as part of the consultation process outside of this chamber and an item of business of the council. Item 2, Mayor's Announcements. I have been notified of the following apologies. Councillors Kate Cannon, Tony Cottier, Christina Muspratt, Tony Smith, Sharon Jones and Jill Wood. Are there any further apologies? No. Mr. Mr. Mayor, uh, Councillor Ellis is making his way back from South Wales and hopes to join his way today. <coughs> Now, uh, Councillor Mike Sullivan has asked to be allowed to make a short personal statement. <coughs> Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is my yes, it's on now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I did say I was going to be brief, and I fully intend to be brief, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, it's with some sadness I stand here today. Um, I've resigned the, the Labour whip recently, I think every member in, in the chamber is aware of that. And I, I'd just like to thank all the members right across this chamber who've emailed me, texted me, phoned me, and indeed tonight uh, people have come up. And it, it is with sadness, but I'd like to say I haven't left the Labour Party, the Labour Party has left me. And there's been um, actions of late and I'll just say, just to sum it up, Mr. Mayor, and I did say I wasn't going to go on, and I don't done intensive. There was an 81-year-old lady came into Pensby Library today to join the, leading, uh, the reading group this morning. She's a, been a lifelong member of this party all her life. She's fought general elections, she's in her 80s, and she said to me, Mike, there was a meeting on Friday night that, that she regularly attends last Friday night. And she said, I couldn't go. I didn't feel able to go. I felt sick in my stomach. And this is a lady who's given her life to the Labour Party. So I haven't left the Labour Party, and I can't be accused of being some right-wing Blairite, because I put myself to the left of Che Guevara. I'm a socialist, I make no bones about it. Um, I voted for Jeremy Corbyn twice and I will fight as hard as I can to see a Labour government but I will not be party to the bullying, the intimidation that's going on to people who've given their lives to this party so I haven't left the Labour Party Mr Mayor the Labour Party has left me and thank you and thanks for all the, the kind words of support and I thank all the parties sitting around in the chamber today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sullivan. Now, before the debate commences, I will call on the Director of Governance and Insurance to provide some legal advice and clarity to all members. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Hopefully this will be helpful to members. It's to explain that this evening's meeting uh, is for Council to discuss motions submitted by members proposing an opinion on the Council's Greenbelt policy. The legal effect of that is not to create a determinative view tested against the evidence, but is an opportunity for members to say and debate what the views are and for Council to express that view at this point in time in respect of the policy in the forthcoming local plan. For the benefit of the public and for members, what will happen next is that the resolved motion or motions from this evening and recorded comments will be submitted to the Council's Cabinet to test and consider in formulating the local development framework documents that will, in due course, be submitted back to this Council for decision. At that point, you will be making a formal decision based upon evidence, including consultation responses and professional advice, not now. This decision, uh, that decision that the Council then makes, will be, then be tested through a forensic process of examination in public before coming back to the authority for a later adoption. As such, that decision in or around July will therefore be very different from tonight when you will be presented with a large set of detailed and developed documentation for formal approval or not. 
This evening, for want of a better description, is part of the consultation process. That said, I need to counsel members that whilst you should feel free to express your views this evening, whatever they may be, uh, you will be best not to say now how you will vote in that decision meeting next year. To do so may be predetermining your position before you are in the proper receipt of the evidence and proposals, and that fettering of your discussion will prevent you from being part of that meeting for fear it will vitiate the resulting decision when tested. Uh, I hope that helps members in your debates tonight. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Phil Davis. Yes, Mr Mayor. No, this is uh, slight, slightly Sorry. unusual, but I would, um, I would pledge your agreement, uh, please your agreement really, to um, ask a long <coughs> question of our Director of um, uh, Growth and Housing, who is present tonight, which is germane to the debate we're about to have, with your permission. I'm advised it's a matter for the chamber to decide. Do you wish to hear from this officer? Yes. Please listen for your name. Members, to clarify, this is a procedural motion as to whether or not uh, an officer of the council be invited to answer a one or more questions of council members before the debate begins this evening. Uh, so, on that basis, uh, Councillor Abbey. Or oh. Councillor Anderson. Against. Councillor Bevy. Against. Councillor Bird. Oh. Councillor Blakely. Against. Councillor Brain. Oh. Councillor Vitemore. Oh. Councillor Burgess Joyce. Against. Councillor Carubia. Oh. Councillor Cleary. Councillor Clements. Against. Councillor Cox. Against. Councillor A. Davies. Four. Councillor G. Davies. Four. Councillor B. Davies. Four. Councillor W. Davies. Four. Councillor Elderton. Against. Councillor Ellis. Against. Councillor Frost. Four. Councillor Gardner. Against. Councillor Gilchrist. Four. Councillor Gray. Four. Councillor Hackett. Or Councillor Hayes. Against. Councillor Andrew Hodson. Against. Councillor Cathy Hodson. Against. Councillor Adrian Jones. Or Councillor Chris Jones. Or Councillor T. Jones. Or Councillor Jordan. Against. Councillor Kelly. Or Councillor Kenny. Or Councillor Lewis. Against. Councillor McLaughlin. Or Councillor McManus. Councillor Meaden. Councillor Mitchell. Four. Councillor Mooney. Councillor Norbury. Four. Councillor Patrick. Four. Councillor Povel. Councillor Rennie. Against. Councillor Rowlands. Councillor Spriggs. Councillor Stapleton. Councillor Stewart. Councillor Sullivan. Councillor Sykes. Councillor Usher. Councillor Walsh. Councillor Watt. Not voting. Councillor Williams. Oh, sorry, Irene Williams. Do bother. <laughs> Councillor Jay Williams. Four. Councillor Steve Williams. Against. Councillor Williams. <coughs> Thank you, members. I, I I guess that won't be the. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Whittingham. I had in my head about your interest. I do apologise, Councillor Whittingham. Four. Thank you. Thank you, members. I, I, I guess that won't be the last time I do that this evening. Mr. Mayor, if I may beg you, Councillor Bagley, do you want to hear the, the outcome of the vote? No, I'll, I'll hear the outcome of the vote. <laughs> Votes in favour 35, votes against.
against 19, abstentions 1. Therefore, the motion is carried. Councillor Blakely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for making an indulgence. Uh, just before this meeting, I was made aware, as, long, uh, as a lot of members were made aware of a letter that's pertinent to this meeting tonight uh, from Richard Bordley, the appeal holdings, to leave the council. With your permission, Mr. Mayor, I think it's imperative that this letter is read out in full. And I beg your permission to do so. In view of the last vote, I think that is in order. Would you like to read it out, Councillor Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This, this is dated today. It's to Councillor Bill Davis, and it, it's, it's headed uh, Read Letter to Residents Concerning the Widow Waters, and it's from Richard Morsley, who is Development Director of Widow Waters Peel Holdings. It says, Your letter regarding Widow Council's local plan, dated August 2018, has come to my attention. As a development director for Widow Waters, I was very disappointed to see that your reference to the project was misleading and inaccurate. Over recent months, we've worked hard to communicate the facts about Widow Waters in an open, honest and transparent way to the community, to local councillors and to MPs, and we've also shared these facts with you personally through these briefings on a number of occasions. In fact, you have been involved with various meetings at site visits over the last few years. You've seen first hand the mediation preparation work we've completed. You've been involved in negotiations about housing and other projects for many months. You've re been regularly informed there's nearly suffering from years of underinvestment and acute market failure. The first housing projects are the hardest to get off the ground and that they will create much needed confidence in the area, following which investment in housing and other projects will accelerate. The figure quoted in your letter, 2,400, is a figure we do not recognise, as is not even the minimum figure we provided in our anticipated delivery trajectory, that being 2,900. With the support and cooperation of you and the council you lead, we could build up to 6,450 in the next 15 years to reach our ultimate goal of the, up to 13,000 homes. The figures we have provided have been grossly misrepresented in your letter to local residents. We currently have five planning applications lodged with Widow Council for a variety of projects, including housing, and we are still waiting for you to commit to the legacy Widow Waters One housing project, which alone will deliver 500 units, with two more housing projects in the pipeline. Those combined could deliver safe 1,000 new homes by 2022, and that is just the start. You've been involved in discussions about the legacy project for 18 months. Now why, now why, so why does your letter and communicate, not communicate these facts, but instead it seems to be the latest part of what appears to be an orchestrated campaign against Peel that is deceiving residents yeah. and deferring attention to the wider issues. In the past few months, we've shared platforms together, making the case for investment in Will. We've also been involved in detailed negotiations about other projects on the site that will lead to the creation of hundreds of jobs and training opportunities for local people, including the Maritime Knowledge Hub, a joint venture between Peel, Will Council, LJMU, Mersey Maritime, Edgerton Village, Town Road South, and MEA Park. You are, in fact, very well aware of all the progress being made at Bill Waters. The commitment from Peel, the hard work that's going to be behind the scenes of the past few years, and the very exciting plans we have for coming few years. Your actions do nothing to encourage much needed outside investments in the Birkenhead and put potential funding from public and private sectors in jeopardy. Given the way you've conducted yourself in recent months, and the very misleading public statements you've made, we ask that you stop this campaign of misinformation, be honest with the people of Will, and correct the misleading information you are distributing. We are asking you to work constructively with us to ensure that this essential project maximises its potential for the good of Will and its people. Yours sincerely, Richard Morsley.
resign. Now, council has voted to hear from the senior officer. Can we accommodate that, please? You're going to ask questions. Get Councillor Phil Davis. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, my question is to uh, Mr. Bailey, the uh, Director of uh, Growth and Housing, and it's as follows. Given that uh, two of the motions in tonight, on tonight's agenda refer to uh, slightly different figures, actually, figures of 6,500 and 6,450 um, attributed to Peel Holdings for new housing start on Wirral Waters, what is Mr. Bailey's expert view of how much credence and confidence can be placed on this figure in the context of completing a local plan which will satisfy a government planning inspector and can he tell us on the basis of the information that we've had from Peel at the moment what figure do we have confidence in there is robust evidence to demonstrate uh, that can be included thank you <coughs> Mr. Mayor, Mr. Council Lewis Question to the uh, head of the governance. As members of this council, are you on the mayor? Mr. Mayor, I think this is a request for legal advice, it is, so it please come on, legal advice. As every member of this council has had to declare whether they have any interest in this issue, whether it be they pecuniary or prejudicial, either through employment or relations of other people who are employed by Peel, does that, employ does that same uh, procedure apply to anybody speaking in this debate? Yeah. 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 Mr. Mayor, if by that uh, Councillor Lewis is referring to officers, then of course they are not part of this debate because they're not, uh, we are not people who vote in this matter. Uh, however, when we do have uh, matters of interest to declare, uh, then we do so through our employment procedures uh, and we do so in writing. And in fact, not to do so is a criminal offence. Uh, so there are very clear procedures for declaring interests uh, and the organisation uh, and you as the empl our employers are required to put in place measures to ensure there is no conflict of interest in the way that we carry out our duties. What about his wife being the planning manager for Peel? Conflict of interest. Yes. Disgraceful. He shouldn't be allowed to speak. Okay. Potential corruption. Do members of the public in the public alley, please remember this is a meeting held in public. It is not a public meeting. Now, Mr. Bailey, do you wish to respond? <coughs> Mr. Mayor, to the question. Uh, clearly, the council has a duty in its planning process to identify sufficient land to accommodate the number of houses set out by the government's formal guidance and formula. Rubbish. That's if you married them. So, in terms of <laughs> members of the public, <laughs> this meeting has to proceed in an orderly fashion. If we continue to get interruptions, I will have no alternative to have the gallery cleared, and I do not want to do that. Thank you. So the council is obliged to do that legally and uh, identify the housing supply over the planned period. <clears throat> There's also new government guidance that sets out a test of deliverability, which means not just identifying the number actual completions within the planned period and particularly in the first five years. On that basis then, the council has to proceed looking at the evidence it has to hand for that deliverability and completions, especially in that first five years. Given the debate this evening on the appeal numbers, the council has evidence of approximately 1,100 houses delivered in that period, sufficient evidence to include that within the planned period. Now clearly the numbers that we've quoted tonight, we don't have any evidence beyond that 1100 so far. However, clearly this is a consultation period and we're open to that evidence being produced. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Mr. Mayor, may, may, I, may I ask a question of Mr. Bailey as well? I believe you have the right to do that. Okay. Mr. Bailey, could you tell us then if you've identified 1100 homes, do you have evidence for appeal? How many homes have you identified? on any potential greenbelt release that, that will be delivered in that same period. Do you, Mr Mayor, clearly we have a uh, duty to look at all sites in the borough that can take housing subject to the How usual many, test. How many evidence will be delivered is the question? Well, we have to, we have to hit How the target. How many evidence <laughs> 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 Answer the question. 
two units in there. We have to identify sufficient land to accommodate our housing number. We have to look at our outline planning applications and those that are evidence. Beyond that, we then have to look at those other sites that pass the sufficient tests. We have done that, so the figure you've got is the figure that's been oh. produced. So, so, this isn't the figure from the council, this is the figure from the development. No, 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 Mr. Mayor, I'm simply asking a question. Mr. Bailey just says he has evidence that Peel will deliver 1,100 homes. The question is, what evidence does he have that other homes will be delivered by releasing green dust? We have to go through a two units. What evidence do you have? <laughs> I want to hear Mr. Bailey, thank you. To ask the least, Mr. Mayor, we have to demonstrate that we can uh, have adequate land supply to deliver our housing numbers. Now, look at it, we also have to take account of the outline planning consents to build that picture. The outline consents on the field site gives a figure of about 1,100. Beyond that, we then have to identify other sites. There's no such test for those green belt sites other than the numbers that they can accommodate. So as part of the field so there's no delivery. Well, there's no such test akin to what we have on the brownfield site. Yes, Councillor George Davis. Just one question. One question I want to ask was, could, could you, Mr. Bailey, because I, I need to know this as well, could you tell me that if this local plan was put forward, i.e., and we took uh, Peel's way to for it, as it is at this present moment in time, how would, how would the inspector, the, the planning inspector, how would he determine that? To you, Mr. Mayor, the, 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 the draft plan, when it's presented to what's called an examination in public, which is chaired by an independent government inspector, has to demonstrate what's called soundness, i.e. it has to be a deliverable plan in accordance with government guidelines. If we don't do that, the plan may be deemed unsound. Uh, many councils have been through that position, and you have to start again and re-evidence the plan and go around the process again. It's a very expensive and time consuming process. And that's what should happen. Councillor Gilchrist. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The plan period. The plan period, surely, though, is an examination that covers five years, that's fairly clear. 10 years with some possibilities, 15 years of possible <coughs> development in many years to come. Would not the inspector be considering the information and the evidence sometime in 2019 with a possible hearing in 2020, which gives us and this council and our officers and Peel time to get our act together and get us out of this war of words and mess. Yes. Yes, please, Mr. Mayor, through you, absolutely, and this is what the consultation period is all about. We're asking the public, partners, developers to come forward and respond to what's been put forward. And if anything constructive comes forward, we're certainly open to listening and looking at those submissions. Thank you. Now, members, it's 6.30. I'm anxious to move on to the debate proper. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. So, councillors, we now turn to item three, turn to the main purpose of this meeting, to consider item three on tonight's agenda papers, to discuss the council's green belt policy. Given that the motions as presented are all on the same topic, and to help avoid repetition or duplication of debate, I'm suggesting that the council debate all three motions as one, in accordance with council standing order 12 brackets two, with separate votes. Do I have a proposer and seconder, please? Yeah. Proposed by Councillor Phil Davis, seconded by Councillor George Davis. Is that agreed? Yes. Thank you. Uh, now, your agenda uh, pack includes requests for an extraordinary council meeting, pages one to two, and the Conservative notice of motion is included at page three. May I have a proposer and seconder, please? Councillor Blakely? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And Councillor David Burgess Joyce? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Blakely, I understand that you wish to request the Council to agree an alteration to your motion, the terms of which are set out on page one of the supplementary papers. 
Is this council agreeable to this variation in the wording of the motion to be put? To clarify, the council is only being asked to agree at this point an alteration to the wording debated, not to agree the motion itself. Councillor Blakey, will you formally move? Formally move, Mr Mayor. And Councillor David Burgess joyce So moved, Mr Mayor. Yeah. Seconded, thank you. Um, no, no, Mr Mayor, I mean, I am, I'm happy to, to, to agree with that, but I'm just slightly surprised you didn't have the motion right the first time round. Yeah. Notice has also been given of two further motions, pages four and five of your agenda pack. May I have the proposals and seconders, please? Councillor Stuart Kelly to formally move, and Councillor Dave Mitchell to formally second the Liberal Democrat motion, number two in the agenda pack. Seconded, Mr Mayor. Councillor George Davis to formally move and Councillor Phil Davis to formally second the Labour motion, number three in the agenda pack. So seconded. Thank you. Conservative motion. We now move to the Conservative notice of motion. Notice has been given of an amendment to this motion, set out on page two of the supplementary papers. So may I ask Councillors Pat Cleary and Councillor Alan Brain to move their amendment? Or does the alternative motion satisfy the purpose of the amendment and there is, a, is there no longer a need to move it? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think we do accept that uh, our amendment is now redundant given the, amend the uh, alternative wording to the Conservative motion. <coughs> Thank you. Councillor Blakely, you now have up to five minutes to speak to the motion. Sorry, Mr Mayor. Yeah, yeah, there, sorry. there is a second amendment. An amendment to the Liberal Democrat. Mm -hmm. I think we come to that later on. Okay, thank, you. Is that correct? thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I'm not prepared to allow our green belt land to be built on. I'm resolute about that commitment. It is a jewel of Will's crown and greatly valued by our residents. Not my words, Mr. Mayor, but the words of the Council. I'd ask Council to remember those words throughout this evening's debate. Mr. Mayor, at Council in July, Five Labour members, many of whom are here tonight, have stayed on the Middle Court strategy local plan. I was going to say this evening the same council has been given the opportunity to support our new motion, but it seems they have some sort of crisis in their wards to the to be here. The question is, would they speak up for the residents or would they simply vote on their party line? Mr Mayor, finally, 14 years late, and only because of government intervention, this council has finally embarked on producing a local plan. A local plan means the council decides how many houses it needs and produces a plan indicating where they should be built. And that plan has to be approved by the Secretary of State. In fact, Mr Mayor, the council puts in a reasonable amount of homes based on population growth forecast. It really is that simple. Mr Mayor, in July last year, our group moved to notice a motion calling on the council to protect the Green Belt. Sadly, both Labour and the Lib Dems voted against our notice a motion, and that is a matter of public record. Yet mm. suddenly, Labour are now telling us it's the Tories who are forcing Green Belt to be considered. And Alan Woodwake got the savings on our precious Green Belt. <laughs> Phil Brightmore, Jerry Williams, Christina Muspect, to name but a few. Then we have councillors Kenny and Usher along with Will MPs, trying to lay the blame at the door of Peel Holdings, saying they have not carried out their promise to build homes on Widow Waters. And what do we discover? Apart from the message tonight, Mr Mayor, we discover the Council is sitting on five live planning applications and have been for a number of months. And have been for a number of months. Mr Mayor, some protection, please. <laughs> Mr Mayor, these are the same Labour councillors who voted against protecting the Green Belt, who voted to release council-owned Green Belt land in Sorgamassi, and the same councillors who supported their leaders' bombing in spending over a million pounds on the Holy Golf Resort, yeah. yeah. again looking to desecrate our Green Belt. With their existing track record, do they really want us to believe, and the public to believe, that they are now opposed to releasing Green Belt? If they are serious, Mr. Mayor, I direct them to vote for our notice of motion and not against, as they did last year. Mr. Mayor, let's look at the Council's response to the government consultation, planning the right homes in the right places. Well, we love looking at it, Mr. Mayor, but we discovered the Council did not bother to respond. So, when it had the opportunity to influence housing here in Will, Labour chose to do nothing and ignore us. 
What a disgraceful to me. Moving forward, even if we accept that 12,000 homes need to be built in the 15 years of life of local plan, and I don't, we know that steel that the appeal holding to states they potentially provide say at 6,450, ultimately building double that number by 2042. We also know we have 6,000 empty homes, another 2,000 plots of planning permission. Given all of that, the National Planning Policy Framework very clear statements that local authorities should regard the development of new buildings of the green belt as inappropriate, to clear from this alone, that there is no need to release green belt to meet widows housing needs. Mr. Mayor, that includes toilet, with the leader of the council is looking to rake in council, a council tax and that <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mayor, when we reposition this council, one minute. The leader of the council went to press to say that our group would be better for damage and dramatics. Well, Mr. Mayor, how ironic that since then we've watched play out Councillor Michael Sullivan resign the Labour whip. We've witnessed uh, the MPeeper Berg and Heavy resign the Labour whip. We've seen Comrade Norby launch his bid to be the next MP for Berg and Head. We've heard new councillor, frankly fed up, Joe Bird, launch a leadership bid, as well as declaring on Facebook that Comrade Norby would make a great MP. Oh, and the same councillor promising to campaign for 500,000 new homes over the next five years, or at the same time opposing the building of 217 homes on a brownfield site in Italy. We heard the leader of the council called an investigation into bullying with Will with Will CLPs calling him Councillor Sullivan. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I'll be thirty seconds, Mr. Mayor. Thirty seconds, no more, no more introductions. Mr. Mayor, we discovered by a leaked email that Pendleton Councillor Kate Cannon sat the leader of the council, since as I speak in her name, with Councillor Williams telling Councillor Cannon that her email was insulting. Anyway, Mr. Mayor, whichever way you cut it, it's clear. And Councillor Blakely, finish, please. Whichever way, whichever way you cut it, it's clear that here and Will, the Labour Party, is far too interested in fighting each other. But it has no time left to fight the people of Earth. And in producing the local plan that protects Will's green belt. Mr. Mayor, be under no illusions that Will Conservative councillors have and will continue to pledge our opposition to releasing green belt land for development. And we have counted for more parties to join with us in that pledge and support our notice of motion this evening. I certainly move to move. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah. <laughs> Members, I had intended to say earlier, when progressing our business this evening, I will be adhering strictly to the time limits during this meeting. Please do not ask for more time, as I will have to refuse you. Now, Councillor Blakey was interrupted a bit and he did go over, so please stick to your time limits now. Now for the Liberal Democrat motion. Notice has, been, notice has been given of an amendment to this motion set out on page two of the supplementary papers. So may I ask Councillors Pat Cleary and Councillor Stuart Kelly to move their amendments. Councillor Kelly, you now have up to five minutes to speak to the motion. Um, sorry, Councillors Pat Cleary and Councillor Stuart Kelly need to form the second. You did, sorry, okay. Councillor Kelly, you now have to five minutes to speak to the motion. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Uh, Mayor, I believe it was Maynard Keynes who said that he changes his mind when the facts change. Strike me as a sensible approach, I would have thought, one as we approach an issue in a dogmatic and unyielding way. At the outset, I have some sympathy for the predicaments of the administration. Here they are, being told by officers as a house of targets, showing a shortfall that could only be accommodated by releasing swains of Greenbelt land. What were they to do? The local plan had been delayed for many years, and now the Secretary of State is threatening intervention as the production of the local plan drifts and drifts. After receiving the figures, Cabinet resolved to move straight into a consultation of releasing parcels of Greenbelt for development. After so much delay, this was a remarkable turn of speed. Did it not occur to the administration at that point to ask some questions about the figures that were presented. In their motion, the administration tells us that they accept the conclusions of the officer's technical analysis. In other words, they accept the figures given in Table 3 of that report without question. And that's remarkable because in his letter to us, <coughs> to, to all residents, the council leader says, my administration has challenged 
that number. <laughs> well, they can't have it both ways, can they? Either they accept the officer's figures or they're willing to challenge the figures. Which is it? I mean, I was bound to say, I was pleased when I read that they proposed challenging the figure and asked officers to let me have sight of the letter of challenge, which I assumed may be based on some of the work that's been done by Professor Gregg, which he's kindly shared with us. But what was the officer's response to me? They're not aware of any challenge. They've not been asked to make any representations to the government or to the Office of National Statistics on the projection being used to reach the 800 per year figure. Just what's going on? Who's being misled? In any event, why continue a consultation based around releasing green belts if you are actively challenging the basis of the figures? That would be a crazy approach to preparing a local plan. Let me share with you one set of statistics that I'm trying in vain to get officers to respond to. Officer National Statistics population growth for the plant period is estimated to be 4,200 people. On that basis, how can we justify without challenge building 12,000 houses to accommodate population growth? That's small. Now I know household formation isn't just a function of population, but the mismatch must be too large to go and challenge. As I've said, I've asked officers, but they've rather taken to not responding to my questions. So back to Keynes and Maxim. What other facts have demonstrably changed? Peel and River Waters. The report to Cabinet includes a figure of uh, 1,100 units associated with Peel. In answer to this, Peel have produced their own figures based on three scenarios. Their de minimis figure is 2,900 and not the 2,400 that the leader puts in his, his, uh, his letter. We'll assume that's a typo. Either way, this isn't a slight error in roundings. This is twice the estimates in the Cabinet report. But again, only half a story is emerging for the public to see. Peel have made it clear that they could deliver some 6,450 units if public sector agencies like this council and Mersey Travel work with them in a joined up fashion on what they describe as a true and honest collaboration and genuine partnership working. I have to ask, what is the Labour Party's objection to doing just that with the largest development and regeneration project on will? Why did the council not embrace the offer of optimum development in partnership appeal? One the minute. figures speak for themselves. The current requirement from Greenbelt is 5,894 units before any contribution from World Waters is taken into account. We've heard from, um, uh, from uh, the council officer who talks about evidence. Where is the evidence apart from Peel's own policy? I would note in that officer's presentation and in answer to questions from members that he was singularly able, unable to offer evidence that the Green Belt could offer. Uh, that's apart from the speculation, frankly, that we've had. Mr. Mayor, the administration is proceeding with a consultation that is causing great worry, great concern, and great upset amongst residents, despite the facts and the figures having changed. And shame on them for that. Yeah. 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 that it is not too late for the administration to take back these notices of motion, to pause the consultation at least until it is properly